Hey guys, my name is Artie and welcome to my brand new Python 101 course. In this course, I'm going to be introducing you to computer science and object-oriented programming. I am a computer science student at the California State University Long Beach studying machine learning. So I use Python every day and that's why I decided to start teaching it. This is a complete beginner course for people who haven't had any experience with programming. And the main objective of this course is not to only teach you how to use the language, but also understand how everything in the language works. For instance, how objects are stored in the memory, how recursion occurs in the memory, because all those things are really important to understanding and building your knowledge about object oriented programming. So this episode is just going to focus on setting up the IDLE, downloading Python and getting ready for actually learning Python. So the first thing we're going to want to do is go on our web browser, go on python.org and all the links are going to be in the description and just download Python. It's a simple installation process similar for Windows and Mac. So that should not be a problem. The next tool we're going to be focusing on heavily in this course is the documentation. So if you're not yet familiar with what those are, any programming language has its own documentation, which is basically a textbook for the language you're learning. Here you can find um, all the classes, all the method methods defined. So whenever you are struggling with understanding what a method does, or you want to look up the code for it, you can just go on here and look it up. So once Python is done downloading and installing, we can go into our terminal and actually see if we have the correct version. As of right now, I'm pretty sure Python version 3.8 is the latest. So we can just go and say Python 3 and check the latest version. So I have the latest version installed. Yours might be different if you're le um, learning this course uh, sometime later. So once Python is done installing, and again, this is similar for Mac and Windows, you're going to have this app that is called Python IDLE or just IDLE. So what this is, if we open it up, it's basically a Python shell. So here we're going to have all our input and output for the Python code that we write. And we can also um, write some of the code here. So we can say, for instance, for name. And this actually allows us to run our Python code over here, but it only does it for a single line. So the way we can create a Python file where we're actually going to write our code is by going and clicking file, new file. And this just opens a simple text editor where we're going to be writing our code. So this blank text file is where we're going to write all of our Python code. Then when we run the program, the Python interpreter is going to compile the code, convert it to bytecode, which will then be executed by our computer. However, right now, this is not a Python file, so it cannot be ran by our interpreter. In order to save this file as a Python file, we simply need to go ahead and save it on our computer with the .py extension. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to click File, Save As. Then we're going to choose a folder where we want to save our file. And now we can just come up with any name for our file. We're going to write a hello world program today. And the .py extension is going to be created automatically once you click save. So let's go ahead and do that. And as you can see, it created a file hello world.py. So what our program is going to be doing today is just simply printing out stuff to the Python shell. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to say print. We're going to use the keyword print. Print is a function in Python that is going to allow us to print messages, for instance, from strings or from errors into our Python shell, basically our console. So then we're going to open parentheses, close parentheses, open and close quotation marks. And in here, we're going to write the text that we want to be printed. And in our case, we're going to say hello world. So print is a function that takes a string as its parameter. And in this case, this parameter is what's going to be printed on the screen. And as you can notice, the strings are highlighted with green and are bounded by the quotation marks. That's how we define a string. 
So in order to run our program, we need to go ahead and save the file. And then to run it, we can just go and click run, run module, or just click F5. And we get our message printed in the console. So as you can tell, this is not a very visual tool. It's definitely not designed for our user to be using. This is mainly a console for the developer to print out stuff like you want to print a certain message when a method is being invoked, or you want to print a certain error that a method can cause. And this is just a tool for us to visualize what's happening in our program as it's being ran. So um, we can go ahead and print something else, say print, close parentheses, open parentheses, same thing. And let's say I like flowers. And let's go ahead and save and run that. And as you can see that it didn't print the two strings on the same line. In fact, it kind of like clicked enter, went on, the, went on the next line and printed the next string. So how does it do that? So as I mentioned before, print takes a string as a parameter. However, this method print has other parameters that can be modified. And one of which that we're going to talk about today is called end. So the end parameter is responsible for the end of the string, how our string is going to end. So in order to modify that parameter, we can go ahead and say comma end, and we're going to set this parameter equal to open quotation marks, close quotation marks, simply a white space. So by default, this parameter is set to backslash n. What this means is the backslash is an escape character. So whenever in a string, the compiler sees this character is going to inter interpret the next symbol as a certain action. In this case, we're seeing n, which means new line. So by default, end parameter is set to this. So whenever the string ends, it's going to go to a new line and print the next string onto a new line. So now we modified that parameter, and that means that it's going to ignore the backslash n, and instead it's just going to print out a space and not go into the next line. So let's see how that looks. And as you can see, in fact, the printed hello world, space, and I like flowers. So now we know that the end parameter is responsible for modifying the symbol that the string we're printing ends with. But what if we want to print both these strings as the same method in the same print statement? We can actually do that. And what allows us to separate these strings properly is the separator parameter. So let's go ahead and try to do that. First of all, we'll delete the space over here. And we'll just cut out this string over here. So the way we separate the strings in our print method is simply by a comma. So now we can insert it. And you would think that it would print hello world, no space, I together. However, because of the separator parameter, we're going to get something like this. So let's save it and run. And as you can see that they're actually separated by space already. And that's what the separator parameter is responsible for. By default, it's set to a single white space character. So if we say, comma, and use this parameter, which uh, the keyword for is, is just sep, and we set it equal to just an empty string, just like we did with end. And let's see how that looks. And as you can see, uh, that it actually ignored the default value of sep and used um, an empty string as our parameter. We could also do something like space, space, and let's see how that looks. And it actually inserts our, um, our defined separator that we defined. So that's it for today's video. Today we'll learn how to download and set up Python, how to use a print statement to print in the Python shell, and learn some of its parameters, like separator and end. 
In the next video, we're going to learn how to declare variables and learn about the primitive types in Python. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.